In our last episode, we had made our way up from Miami to Fort Pierce after a few nights anchored out, and we're settling in for the MTUA rendezvous and tackling a few boat projects. We're slowly cruising America's Great Loop, which is a circumnavigation of the eastern part of the U.S. by waterways. When it gets too cold, we store our boat and then return to our RV and continue roaming around the U.S. in the south. Oh, Fort Pierce. Coming up on two months in Fort Pierce, actually, and wow. <laughs> <laughs> so Fast. we came here in the beginning of April. I think we were on April 10th. Uh, a few days in advance of the MTOA rendezvous, which we covered in our last video. And our intention was to stay here for one month, maybe even less, depending on how many projects we wanted to tackle and stuff. Um, and, well, it took a little bit longer for <laughs> some of these projects we were tackling. Well, projects. I mean, they're like, they're like house projects. They're like RV projects. They usually take longer than anyone anticipates. Yes. So we, we tackled two major projects here and we'll go into more detail about them, but uh, we did a, put in an entirely new generator, we took out the old generator, and then we did a lot of interior work in our living room and kitchen. So both significant upgrades in quality of living and safety. I mean, the TV is probably not going to help with the safety, uh, but we, we can watch safety videos. There on we it. go. But the generator definitely uh, gives us a lot more peace of mind with the reliability of our off-grid power systems. So both awesome upgrades don't regret doing them at all just they took longer i mean we thought we we're gonna be able to fix it old generator and when it looked like that could be just an endless money pit on a generator that was going on 20 years old and overpowered for our size yeah so, so we made some different choices we will have some videos out on each of these two projects later we have documented them both right so we'll go into details later on that but fortunately, Fort Pierce has been a wonderful town to spend uh, nearly two months in. It, you know, we are right now hopefully hopefully another day away from be, being ready to leave, but this has been a great place to be. So Fort Pierce is a cruiser central mecca. Uh, there are several liveaboard friendly marinas in the area. Uh, Harbor Town and the uh, city marina over in downtown uh, Fort Pierce are both very popular for cruisers to stay in short term stays as well as seasonal stays. And then the marina we're at, Causeway Cove Marina, just opened this year and it's actually been kind of interesting because um, we're basically almost the only people here. It's still brand new and mostly empty. We'll go into that in just a moment. I right. uh, can give you an overview of this marina. Um, but Fort Pierce has been a fun city to explore. It's got enough of a downtown that there is some nightlife here. So yeah. there's a th uh, community theater there. So we've been going to some concerts. Yeah, yeah the, the touring concerts actually have been coming through. Um, there's a lot of great restaurants. There, One thing I've really noticed about Fort Pierce is there's a lot of fabulous public art everywhere you go. And I guess the city has got a really deep art roots with the Florida Highwaymen having started here. So there's like a whole walking trail that you can do, go and explore the history of the Florida Highwaymen. Uh, we didn't do it because we're sun averse. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and we've been so tied up in projects, but we, we've gotten out and we've seen a lot of art. We've seen a lot of, tried a lot of restaurants. Um, there's great um, walking around here. There's a great, you know, the, you go out to the jetty out at the inlet and beautiful place to walk. Um, Restaurants down there. Yeah. There was one evening we went down there after a long day on boat projects and it had been rainy, rainy, rainy for days. It was yes. like the first sunny day and there's a beautiful sunset down there. Uh, so we're watching the sunset and I hear opera in the distance. I figure someone's just playing opera like on a boombox or something. Do they still call them boomboxes? Sure, they, they call them boomboxes. If you carry them around, it's a boombox. <laughs> But and it, then we peeked around the corner. It was live. Yeah, so oh, a guy had so set beautiful. up a, a microphone setup, and he was singing, and he was you know doing it for tips. But he was amazing, and so it's like wow, this sort of there's there's this, and we've seen that uh, there's live music on all over the place. Um, I think actually we saw the same guy singing at the farmers market the other day too. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so there's there's this it's just a really neat town. Yeah. I really dug the vibe of Fort Pierce. Highly recommend it. Yep. Yeah. Speaking of the. Um, farmer's market every Saturday morning over at the city marina and we can walk over the causeway to it or we can just we have our mini cooper here or we can <laughs> we can just scoot over there uh, farmer's market with you know fresh produce locally grown um, baked goods and things like that and then they also have a arts and craft fair too yeah uh, not that we have room for lots of stuff well, but, but no, that's we been have cool. actually gotten some art for the boat we got mm -hmm. a, a new center centerpiece for the pilot house and for the bathroom we got some some locally made art um, we got, uh, and then we'd get breakfast there every Saturday too. At the, <laughs> Not at the every Saturday. Park. We didn't make it over every Saturday. Yeah. Our boat, our Project contractors have been on board. Um, yes. There's also some great museums around here. Uh, right across the street from this marina is the St. Louis County 
uh, aquarium, which has an exhibit that was brought down from the Smithsonian. It, it, yeah, it's actually affiliated with the Smithsonian, and I think it's the only Smithsonian museum outside of Washington. Um, and it's it's showcasing some nearly extinct coral, so some of the last remaining in the world of different coral species. And we spent a whole afternoon over there with yeah. my mother, and it's, it's a small, but it is packed full of yeah. awesome. It, it's a tiny, 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 tiny aquarium, but it is Smithsonian quality, and it, it's a total treat. It's only what two dollars. Four dollars. It's like four bucks to go. Yeah. If you're in the area, definitely recommend it. Um, there's a great little park right across there, so that's been a great refuge for us to go do a quick walk. Yep. Um, right along the water so it's just a really pretty little park uh the navy seals museum is here so a lot of people don't know that in more world ii uh this area was, was a training place of the seals yeah it was a, a training center for the seals so they practice landings and um, all sorts of other skill training here so there is a fabulous museum put together with the history of the navy seals um yep. just right on the uh, the north hutchinson island right and there's probably a lot more to see. We actually feel like we have barely scratched the surface in this area, which is great. We love to, to leave a place thinking that's going to be neat new things to see when we get back around to visiting it again. And we'll definitely come back to Fort Pierce yeah. at some point. Fort Pierce, definitely. Uh, another thing I really like about this area is because so many cruisers come here, or maybe it's because of the services here that so many cruisers come here. You never know. It's a chicken and egg <laughs> sort of thing. There are a lot of resources for marine here. Now, you go down to South Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, they're more focused on the mega yachts and the mm -hmm. super yachts. This area seems to be more focused on everyday cruisers like yep. ourselves. Smaller boats and such. So there's a lot more resources, a lot more affordable resources yep. here. Um, there's the Marine Connection Surplus Store. It's the largest marine surplus store, I think, in the country, if not the East Coast. So it's like warehouse mm -hmm. size of spare parts. There's a great do-it-yourself boatyard at Cracker Boys, which is where we were originally heading in November before yep. we got waylaid in Miami. Yeah. Um, so you can go over, get hauled out, and work on your own boat there. Uh, we got hauled out twice there with the generator stuff. Generator and they out, are, generator in. They yes. are the most efficient boatyard we have encountered yet. No. That's, Granted, that's, we've had three <laughs> boatyards so far in our experience, but... <laughs> but yeah, ridiculously efficient around uh, um, you're in, you're out. Well, and and done and done. And <laughs> affordable, too. I mean, yes. I was super yep. surprised to uh, be hauled out and use their crane for half an hour. It was only 360 bucks uh, for a 47 foot yacht. So yeah. I was super impressed with those pricing yeah. uh, based on what we've paid elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so Fort Pierce, great city to stop in. I lost to explore here. Um, loving the downtown vibe here. It's a great mix of small city and a lot of livelihood here. So yeah. definitely loved it. Um, Causeway Cove Marina, let's talk about that. Uh, they are a brand new marina that just opened this year and there is a lot to love about this marina. It's got that new marina smell. <laughs> When the wind's in the right direction, that's one of the one of the downsides. <laughs> but yeah, so so it's got a great it's, it's a great location because you have easy access to the inlet and easy access to the ICW, and then you've got a great panoramic view to the south, which is the downside <laughs> of their location. So this property has been owned, uh, according to their brochure, by the same owner since a long time. This used to be a mobile home park that was wiped out in the two thousand four and five hurricane season. Um, and so they have a vision for this property being a multi-purpose resort area. So they want to put in a hotel here. Um, they have the marina, ar they have the marina already built. They want to have restaurants. They have a 10 spot RV park here as well, which is really yeah. cool to see the meshing of RVing yeah. and marine. And it's a nice, nice little RV park right, right, right next to the marina, which is fabulous. Their marina rates are right in line with all the other marinas in the area. So it's $15 a foot for a monthly stay here. Uh, we're getting it at 10 because we were the, with the MTOA mm -hmm. deal. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, their daily rates are in line with everybody else here. Um, the downsides to this marina, uh, let's go with the basic ones first, is your walking distance to get downtown, you are going over the causeway, which yeah. is a beautiful walk. It yeah. is totally doable. Uh, I'd say it's a better walk from here downtown than from Harbor Town downtown. So but Fort Myers Marina, the city marina, city is marina right is there. is in downtown. <laughs> so the city marina is totally understandable why it is the prime spot. Um, the staff here is fabulous. I just want to mm -hmm. say that up front. They are completely <laughs> fabulous. They have nothing else to do because there's so few of us, so we get lots of attention when we want it need it. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, but the, the downside is the southern exposure. So if the wind is from the south, this marina gets very choppy. We've actually seen white caps inside the marina. Several times. So We've almost seen. any blow we get here, it is... We are in a constant storm tie in this marina because even a little pop-up storm 
pushes up you into the you docks. To the, to you the get, south. and because all of the slips, or most of the slips, are facing, are parallel to the south, you're taking any rolling uh, waves to the beam. So yes. we're constantly rolling in this, and we have to stay off the dock, or else we're going to roll right into the dock. Yeah, and and quite a few of the boats that are here, the few boats that are here, quite a few of them have damage from having hit the docks from the southern southern winds. So if you come here, just Keep us keep plenty of separation from the the, the set set spring lines um, with with the right balance between tightness to keep you off the dock, but enough springiness to yep. to give you that flexibility because you can get two three foot swells in here, and that's not even during storms. Um, just during the day, be, uh, just fetch coming in from the coastal it'll waterway. occasionally be just a, a random roll just comes through, and we're like, whoa! Wave rolls, and yeah, you're, we're <laughs> I, in the marina. It's, um, <laughs> so so they do have a big challenge with that, and hopefully someday they'll be able to build a, a, a seawall sea or something just to, to properly block it. But right now that is a challenge. Uh, shallow entry, so Very they. Shallow. Claim that it's um, five feet. Five feet. Um, we have seen more groundings at this marina than we have almost anywhere else. Just in the approach, it, the it, approach is a little challenging. Um, we're going to overlay uh, some drone footage we took yeah. of the uh, channel, so hopefully you can yeah. use that. You got to work the channel. <laughs> come in at high tide. Um, you know, we came in at low tide, not knowing how shallow it was, and, and we did fine. But we were basically kicking up mud the entire way in and out, and um, so yeah, definitely be on guard for the shallow water and pump outs. It's a brand new marina. They are advertising being state of the art. To me, that means building in at least inslet pump out options, at least on your larger ones where liveaboards are going to be staying at, or right. cruisers are yeah. going to be staying at. They don't do liveaboard for long term here. So that's their excuse. Yeah, right. So the pump out station, it's behind us for us to pump out every two weeks or so. We have to move the boat around. Um, it wouldn't be too much of a problem if they had adequate shore facilities. So they do have bathrooms here with one shower each in each of the men's and women's. And yeah, and only one stall in the men's room. So that, that's, it's kind of crazy. Even at an empty marina, we've had to be in stand in line to use the bathroom. So the shore facilities really aren't adequate if they actually had this marina full. Um, you would be depending either on your own facilities and using the pump-out station and having to move out or waiting in line in yeah. at the bathroom. So keep these things in mind if you come here. It is a great marina and I hate to, s I, I just want to show the reality yeah. of it because there's a lot of heart in this marina too. Yeah. <laughs> so. and, and it is, a, 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 the facilities are, are new, everything is in great condition. You are walking distance both to the jetty and the inlet and to downtown and to the park that's right there. You have beautiful views and, and it's only when the wind is from the south is it is it kind of challenging here. And then if the wind is from the west, you do have the water treatment plant is also right next door and it can get a little it's not really stinky but it is definitely noticeable it, it, you start to think maybe your sewage tank is overflowing because well maybe you timed <laughs> your pump out wrong um no then you realize no the wind's coming from the east you just look the from fly the west. from the west oh, sorry mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's a smell i the best way i just have uh, come to describe it it's fabric softener scented poop sort of yeah <laughs> it's, uh, again it, it's not bad but it is noticeable you're like oh hey okay there we are but uh, if it's a calm day here and there's not too much fetch coming into the marina um it is beautiful here yeah. and we have enjoyed it not being full because we pretty much have adequate privacy privacy here to leave the windows open all the time and, and we yeah, have and wonderful views. views oh the views are spectacular and it's again so um this would be a great overflow marina if you're, if you're passing through briefly and um or yeah. you can't get a spot in a uh, downtown city marina <sighs> but if you leave your boat here, especially during a stormy season, be very just, careful with how you tie it up. Just tie up as if a hurricane's coming through because <laughs> those southern waves. Yes. Yep. Anyway, hopefully we are out of here soon from Fort Pierce. We have thoroughly enjoyed our stay here. Uh, got lots of projects done, but we are ready to cruise again and make some miles north. It is hurricane season. Yes. So heading north, hopefully within 48 hours. Just got to wrap up a few more things, fingers oh, crossed. <laughs> See you at the next stop.